Pete here with the River Kings and today we're talking all about how to sleep warmer while you're camping in the cold and specifically while you're in your hammock. So I got the idea to make this video after I posted this video which is all about practicing for kayak camping and a lot of private messages came in about hey here's what I'm doing I can't sleep warm or hey I'm looking to get into this coming up really quickly and the weather's getting cold what's the most important piece of gear that I need for the setup and it's gonna be better for you if you have everything dialed in, there's no doubt about it. But if you need one piece of gear that's gonna be more important than all the others, undoubtedly, that one piece of gear is gonna be a good underquilt. Absolutely no question about it. I have several underquilts ranging from all different levels of insulation, um, which would accommodate me for several different temperatures that I'm camping in. Now these are pricey and I will admit it took me a little bit to come into uh, being comfortable with making this purchase and before I made the purchase I actually made two or three under quilts for my hammock and they weren't great. They did keep me warm. I could not buy um, a compressible stuffable insulation um, and super lightweight insulation to kind of be feasible for taking on trips. So what I was making were, were these huge um, underquilts, but they were really warm and I realized, hey, these things work and this thing is for real. And after I sewed up two or three of them, I ended up giving them away to my friends who didn't have anything. I think I still have one of them out in the building. And uh, my wife talked me into buying this one and I was spending a lot of time in the woods. And this is the Hammock Gear Incubator. Had it for many, 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 many years. Um, it's still in perfect condition. P5 has inherited this guy and this is now his. This is the new quilt I've been using. It is a UGQ Zeppelin. And this thing right here is the cat's meow. Um, it's just a little warmer and I sleep a little drier in it. And um, I just like it a little better. But Here's what I'm going to show you that is common to both of these quilts. Um, some of the features on there. Uh, number one, this is a baffle. If you see this baffle, this neck thing right here, this insulates any airflow from coming into the hammock. Let me set it up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so now my quilt is on the hammock and this will work on any hammock basically at all, whether it's an ENO, any kind of uh, cheaper, Amazon-y kind of hammock all the way up to your really good stuff. The only problem is if you have an old Hennessy that has the center entry, the old, you know, uh, Velcro entry in the middle, bottom entry hammock. Um, you can make it work, but they have special quilts for those. But I don't know a whole lot of people that are still using the bottom entry hammocks anyway. Most people are into a zip hammock or just an open hammock. And for the purposes of this video, we'll just say this works for any hammock. So. Um, I've got my test dummy in here, which are some pillows from the guest room, but don't tell my wife that I raided the guest room setup for the video. Um. All right, so basically you don't want any air between you and the quilt when you're laying in the quilt. You want that up tight against you. And a good quilt system is sewn in such a way and the suspension is built in such a way that as you lay in there, it doesn't compress any of the insulation underneath you. And that's what we're trying to avoid. And that's why a quilt is so important. If you put just a regular sleeping bag in the hammock and go for it, the top of you is gonna be warm, but that's not actually what creates the heat. The bottom of you is gonna be really cold and they call that CBS, which is cold butt syndrome. And what that is, is when you've compressed your insulation by laying on it down to like an eighth of an inch, um, there's no insulative value anymore on the bottom half of your sleeping bag and you've also got airflow going underneath your hammock. And so any heat that may be there is immediately pulled off your body by the airflow and it's miserable. And it does not take a cold night to be cold in a hammock. It just takes a little airflow and a little ill preparation. So the concept of the underquilt is to give you maximum loft, maximum insulation underneath your hammock at all times and never compresses. So as you can see, this hammock is just like I would lay in it, and there is inches of loft, probably three, four inches of loft all around, all the way to the feet. 
And as you can see, it's nice and tight everywhere. And most of these are the same, just have like a drawstring, um, which would pull your suspension up. And you can work it a couple different ways. This one is set for me in this hammock. And this is that baffle I was telling you about. Any air that can get out right here is going to be the heat that you've created with your quilts. So this baffle hammock gear has them. Any good, reputable, premium quilt company will produce this baffle here for you. And it is all important. As you can see, that just snugs up everywhere. And as the pressure's on there, there's no air gap here for any cold air to get in, which is the byproduct of the warm air getting out. That's what we want to stop. So baffle here, you'd have to come around this way as you set up in the night, like, oh, here's a baffle here too. You want to tuck that in, make sure all that's working just the way it needs to be working. And now you have airflow cut off. Now, any heat you generate with your quilt will stay between you and the quilt. It can't escape out that way or out that way, but it can escape upward. That's the next piece of gear. And this one is not as important depending on the weather. Um, if it's really, really, really cold outside, you'll want the best one available, but that's your top quilt. Again, I have a lot of top quilts. These are my two best. This is the Hammock Gear Burrow Zero that I bought many years ago. I got it alongside of the incubator and it did very well for me. No complaints whatsoever. Pete's taking this one now. And now I use my UGQ Bandit and it's a zero and they did the printed fabric, which I, I just love that. Um, if you have your own logo, you can get that printed on there. Um, they got all kinds of options. You can pick your colors inside, outside color. Um, for whatever reason in my mind, black seems like the color of warmth to me. Um, so I just got the black inside so I can trick myself into thinking that it's warmer when it's really cold out. But these are basically upside down sleeping bags. I'll show you what I mean. That is the inside and I have chosen the sewn foot box. You can also get snaps down through here um, that, so you can open it up completely. With the snap one, uh, there'll be a draw cord and a little you know, area where you cinched up and a potential for draft to get in and out of the hole. So I'm not using these as a blanket around camp, so I just chose the sewn foot box. Um, just a little less complicated. And instead of a zipper area, uh, which is typically on the side or maybe even in the middle. Um, on the quilt, the opening is underneath you and there's no zipper, there's no fastener. And as you get in there and you put your feet in that foot box and that folds down around you, you simply just tuck it in um, to the inside of your hammock and it folds into the overlap where the under quilt is higher than where you've tucked in the top quilt and it seals off all your heat. All right, so my pillows are now tucked in and they're snug as a bug in a rug. And to demonstrate where the head would be, my pillow is wearing my old school Liquid Logic ball cap. And the only thing that exposed, as you can see, is the face. And so uh, inside here is the feet. The whole body's tucked in there. There is a drawstring right here where as you snap this around the back of your neck, if you chose to do so, you could pull that drawstring up and kind of cut off any draft escaping from your body. Um, it kind of needs to be pretty cold to need that feature. And a lot of times I'll have friends that don't have the premium stuff and they're freezing and I'm actually letting heat out sometimes during the night if it's kind of a borderline night. But that is what a premium quilt can do for you. If you don't have a quilt, this is where you can use your the best sleeping bag you have. And this is why I say the bottom quilt is more important because there's no other piece of gear that can substitute for the bottom quilt, the under quilt. I have, when I first started to try to beat the system without having to pay the price, I actually used um, different pads, uh, even like a cot mattress. I used the standard half inch foam pad that everyone uses. You can use air mattresses. You can do things um, to prevent the cold from escaping, kind of like a little insulator. But I'm telling you, take it straight from me. I've spent thousands of nights in hammocks. Nothing generates heat like an underquilt. The other things only keep it from escaping. And so there's only a certain level of warmth and comfort you can achieve. Whereas the quilt systems generate the heat and then the top quilt traps the heat. 
So again, if you had no top quilt, but an under quilt and you used a sleeping bag on there, any good decent sleeping bag will do a good job. The better sleeping bag you have will do the better job. Um, the only problem with the sleeping bag in a hammock is that you can do this weird kind of, um, uh, kind of it's, it's a dance is all it is. You're getting in there, you're trying to lay in there right and get the zipper right, then sit up and pull it and scooch around. It takes you about two minutes to get all situated where you can zip the thing up. And so what I end up doing is I just turn it like a quilt with the zipper down, leave that zipper open and just lay in there and pull it up around you just like the quilt. Just that's all you need if you have a good under quilt. But if you're going to make the right move, go ahead and get the top quilt. They're just so easy. They're, they're made for it. It's a little bit better. Get a premium one and you'll be sleeping warm. So those are the one and two most important things to sleep warm. Let's talk about the X factor. And that is, again, air movement. So you want to cut down on all air movement possible. The difference between a three season tent and a four season tent is that you can seal off a four season tent for zero airflow in or out. And that's what you have to start doing to trap heat in really, really cold conditions, or you really have to start bolstering multiple quilts and different other things you can do. So I've done a couple things over the years to solve this equation. I'll pass them along to you. Number one, if you can find a tarp that can go all the way to the ground with doors that'll seal down to the ground. Um, and this video right here has it. It's got a ton of views on YouTube. And this is where I take a Kelty 16 square tarp and turn it into a tent around my hammock. Sealed to the ground, no airflow, made an incredible amount of difference for how warm I slept at night. And it was inside that the just the, the tarp shelter was probably 10 to 15 degrees warmer than outside, just like that. And so that brings you 10 or 15 degrees warmer experience in your hammock. It's just a no-brainer. It's warmer all the way around. Warmer when you're sleeping. Warmer when you're changing clothes in the morning. Um, it's just way better. And it also seals off from any moisture coming through, blowing on the wind um, on some mornings, especially if you're camping near water, which can be a thing. So that video got a lot of views, and I think it actually helped kind of change the direction uh, a lot of these tarp manufacturers are going. And they actually now make premium uh, tarps, even uh, like hot tarps, where they have like a small Yukon stove in there and a little area for the chimney to go through, but still ultralight. It's some pretty cool stuff. I'm going to be looking into some of those to do reviews on and to kind of upfits what I'm doing. But yeah, just Kelty 16 is all I've used for that for years. Word of warning on the Kelty's though, as you may know, the new ones do not hold out water like the old ones, unless they've changed again. There doesn't seem to be the same treatment on them as they used to have. Uh, not sure how to explain it, but the new ones do not repel water. Um, they kind of leak bad. But what we did was spray them with uh, Camp Dry, and so far so good. Much cheaper option, but again, I'm going to be looking into some of the premium ones because that's what's going to be available to everybody. My old one that's still doing really good, you're not going to be able to find that, so I'm going to move forward and see if I can get a better tarp as well. That's what you can do with your tarp. All the way to the ground, stop the airflow. But I have one more secret trick that was born out of necessity when I was camping all those years, uh, 120, 130 nights a year camping, all weather. And my head being here, I was just breathing cold air all night. And I said, you know, I need to find a way to kind of trap some of this heat. And mind you, this was before all the cool stuff like winter socks and all that came out for the hammocks. This was me just trying to come up with a way to save heat. And the thing is, the wooby. Oh yeah, don't laugh. It's more than just a security blanket. It's, it's more than just a soldier's teddy bear. The Wooby or poncho liner or cho liner, depends on however you wanna say it, this is an amazing piece of gear. So simple, yet so rugged, um, and not too expensive. You can find these at just about any Army Navy surplus. They're also online, and you can do some awesome things with the Wooby. You can wear it as a blanket in and around camp. You can lay on it. You can lay under it. You can, there's no end to the uses you can have with the Wooby and it is a fantastic piece of gear. But here's how I use it. Um, what you'll have on these are little shoelaces on the corners sewed in. If you can see that. And I was looking at it one day, I said, hey, I got an idea. Let me try something. Let me show you what I came up with. 
there you have it. It's the Wooby over the hammock and I kind of use it like a winter sock. It's just basically a vapor barrier, um, uh, another way to control airflow. So you're trapping your warm air inside of here. And what I found was uh, I have a pretty cool watch. I would hang on my ridge line under here on really cold nights and it would stay 50, 60 degrees inside of here where outside could be down as far as 20 and 30. So let me show you how I set it up. Okay, so this is the foot side and I've used these little laces, the little strings to tie it in such a way that it can't move, it can't slide. And that keeps things in place during the night. Now, over on the other side, on the head side, I've tied it around my ridge line. And that way I can slide this back, get in the hammock, and then pull this back over me and it stays in place. Now, if you get way too hot, you can just throw it off of you completely. And if you get cold, you can pull it back on Another thing you can do is regulate the heat by maybe sliding it a little bit off of you. And that way you can, maybe if you need a little bit of heat or a little less heat, um, you can do that with the way it slides. And so there it is. That's everything exactly how I set it up to sleep in cold weather. And you can regulate that. Some nights you're not gonna need this, it's gonna be too much. Other nights you're gonna need everything you can. Um, this is the gear aspect and how I use the gear. So that's the techniques I use to stop airflow to insulate and all that good stuff. But here's a couple other secret tricks you may or may not know. So I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do a public service to the entire camping world, or at least the 20 people that watch this video. There's a myth that's been perpetrated by mean people who wanted to laugh at other people, probably older guys wanting to laugh at the younger guys. They tell them that, hey, the less clothes you wear in your sleeping bag, the warmer you're gonna sleep. I want you to think about that for a minute. And I want you to think to all applications in life, all of them, and tell me where you use less insulation to stay warmer. Yeah, see, it, it doesn't work that way. If you're a little cold in your sleeping bag or you're cold in your quilts and your tent, your hammock, Maybe just you're standing outside. What do you do? You put on a little more clothes, man. It's that simple. Using less clothes in your sleeping bag does not keep you warmer. And I wanna tell you, I, I was subjected to this evil, evil myth um, as a young man. And we would get in there with our underwear on a frozen night and talk about, man, you know, it's really cold. Think how cold it would be if we had all our clothes on. And <laughs> I was such an idiot. It took me till I was about 20 to realize, I don't think, I don't think that works. And then uh, I can guarantee you that that's not the case. No, no, using less clothes to sleep at night does not make you warmer. It makes you an idiot. Trying to sleep warmer wearing less clothes. I'm sorry, that's all it does. So yeah, if you're still a little cold, put on another layer. But, nice segue. But now that we're on the subject of what clothes to wear, I will say that whatever clothes you wear, you want dry clothes. You don't wanna bring moist, dirty, sweaty clothes into your sleep system. That's not, you just want dry is what you want. Dry, dry, dry. Moisture is your biggest enemy when you're trying to stay warm. You wanna stay dry. So on all my trips, I have this sort of material. It's a silk weight kind of material and that's my cross paddle shirt. Actually, this is Matt Wallen's shirt. I'm gonna get it to him shortly. Um, but something um, not cotton. I don't take any cotton with me on any trip ever. Uh, cotton is not good. You don't want cotton. But um, any kind of lightweight material like that, I always have a set that I do nothing but sleep in. And I wear them to sleep and I take them off in the morning and get back into my other clothes to go about my day. And that way when we get to the next camp and everything's set up, no matter what's happened, no matter how filthy, how wet, sweaty, soaked, immersed, no matter what has happened, I have dry, clean, warm clothes to sleep in. And it goes with your overlayers too. And of course, if you have nothing dry, you have to use what you have. But try to plan ahead and have dry clothes to keep with you. You don't want moisture inside of there. So while we're on the subject, this heat barrier here will trap a little moisture. It's gonna have to. This is a pretty breathable fabric, but it does trap a little breath and on a really cold night, 
the outside can be frozen where the inside won't be. But the important thing is that the moisture is not in your quilts. The moisture is out here. Never put your stuff up over your face and breathe down into your quilts. You think it's warming you up, but you're really just putting a bunch of moisture down there in your sleep system that's gonna, that's gonna rob you later in the night. So don't do that. I know you want to. I've wanted to do it before too. Don't trap your breath with your sleep system. The military sleep system, for example, the whole bivy is waterproof and rainproof, but they have a collar around your neck you're supposed to draw up real tight so that while you're breathing in the bivy, it's not going down and penetrating down into your sleep system. Very important. Moisture is bad. So keep this tight if you're using this and don't breathe down into your bag. Use dry, clean clothes every night you do this and it's gonna make a big difference. Is there anything else you can do? Yes, your body needs fuel to stay warm. And there's two things I wanna talk about with, uh, with, with what you're gonna do, eating and drinking. So number one, I definitely would recommend eating something before getting, right before getting into your bed. Um, you may eat and then brush your teeth, but before you go to sleep, right before you go to sleep, eat. Um, if you wake up cold, um, there's usually one or two reasons. <laughs> The first reason is that you're not in a bunch of good gear. You might get cold, um, but we're gonna try to generate heat. So one of the things you need to do is eat. So if you wake up in the middle of the night, eat. Just go ahead and eat. And as you're metabolizing that food, it's gonna generate heat inside of you. Your body just needs fuel to stay warm. Number two, it's not a great topic to talk about, but a lot of times when I'm camping, I drink, I don't know why, but I drink more maybe towards the end of the day and I usually have to get up and pee once during the night. But the trap is that the, the hammock feels so good and you know it's so cold outside that you try to hold it and you basically lay there awake for an hour, two hours, and you're not gonna go back to sleep. Number one, you have to pee. Number two, needing to pee somehow makes you cold. Just get up, do your business, get back in your hammock. While you're up doing your business, go ahead and get you something to eat. If you're cold, get back in. You'll go right back to sleep, I promise. That's how you do it. So I hope the video helps. I hope that's kind of what you were looking for when you were asking the questions. Um, this has served me well for years and years and years. I sleep fantastically when I'm out in the woods. So if I left anything out, which I probably have, put a comment down there and let me know what you think. Um, I'd like to hear it. There's a million ways to do this. There's a million ways to stay warm. But a lot of these things uh, are just facts. So no matter what piece of gear or what style of camping you're doing, these techniques, these principles will have to be adhered to if you're gonna sleep the warmest and most comfortable. So Pete with the River Kings, thanks for hanging out. Go get you some stuff, practice, go out in your yard on a cold night and see if you can stay warm. If you fail miserably, just come on inside and I crawl into your bed. But if you get some good quilts, a good tarp, uh, the wooby, you're gonna sleep warm. And uh, I haven't talked much about tents, but that's mostly because there's only two kinds of people that camp. People that sleep in hammocks and people that lay around all night in tents, tossing and turning, trying to stay comfortable, wondering uh, what it must be like to sleep in a hammock. See you next time.